Okay, so let's take a look at the mouth group within the fresh face effect. I'm here in Apple Final Cut Pro, but this would be exactly the same in Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects. So this effect actually has a bit going on already. We have um, skin smoothing, which I'll disable for now. There's some eye effects going on there. I'm going to turn those off as well. And if I look here at the preview masks, you can see that the masks view will reflect which features are enabled. So right now it's lips and teeth that we're looking at here. And I'm going to go out of preview mask mode back to the output view. And so running through these parameters rather quickly, lip mix just fades the overall effect of any of the lip related parameters. Saturation does what you'd expect here. Gamma is a useful one as well. This lip gloss is basically like a brightness which can be constrained to just the highlights and how the highlights are defined is basically with this threshold control. And then lip hue as well. And the teeth group is just basically a way of brightening up or whitening the teeth. And again, it's got a mix control. Um, it's got a brighten control and then it's got very important this sort of threshold because you can end up with some sort of unnatural looking effects you want to use this threshold wisely and you probably don't want the threshold totally sharp that way you want it to actually be somewhat softened so that area is blended that's going to give you the best results a lot of the time and like the eyes or the skin group if I'm looking at the masks, it has its own mask controls that can be exposed with this checkbox. And you know, something like this might be a useful control in this effect. Um, and again, you know, most of the time, by default, these regions are blended because they're polygons that are made out of straight lines. Um, so they're not often not so precise and giving them a little blend makes the effect a lot more convincing. So that is a quick look at the mouth group, which consists of effects that are applied to either the lips or the inside of the mouth, specifically the, uh, the teeth. Another thing I wanted to point out while here in the eye group, and this actually somewhat applies to the mouth features as well. If I step through here, um, this is sort of a made as a very exaggerated effect. So the eyes and the mouth effect is very obvious and you can see what's going on here. You see that as her hand goes in front that you still see the lips effects here and then the eye effect here on her hand. So the machine learning model we're using right now to do the tracking um, does not attempt to sort of detect when the eye or mouth is obscured that way. So that is something we need to handle, um, you know, with keyframing or by hand somehow. So this is in this, in this, in this version of the effect here, if I scroll down and you can see this left and right eye fade, as well as the lip mix, if I kind of step through it, you see what's going on. I basically just threw a few keyframes in there and then handled that that version um, or that, that issue where the eyes and mouth become obscured by the hands. And you can see, you can get a pretty con convincing result. It can handle a lot of these situations, but there are definitely cases where you might want to fade only the left eye or only the right eye. Um, and so that's why those controls are there. And again, it's worth being aware that this is a limitation that we have to deal with um, using the filter parameters here when those face features become obscured or occluded by other objects in the foreground.